So guys, as promised in the last video, we are doing an update to the saltwater 75 gallon tank. I've added corals, lots of changes. I should have probably done an update a lot sooner than that. I'm Fish Tank Dave, let's get right into it. So guys, thanks again for joining me on another video. I know we are mo mostly saltwater, or saltwater, we're mostly freshwater focused on this channel. And, uh, but I do have one saltwater tank and there's lots of things I didn't know and I'm learning on, along the way. And I have to say that saltwater has become really awesome and I can't see myself, well maybe one day I would own like a gigantic, like 150 gallon reef tank or something, maybe, Maybe just one of those, but it's it's pretty it's pretty expensive. I'm not gonna lie, um, but if you do it the way I did it, it kind of kind of just as I'm going, adding more expenses and adding more things. Really, you don't need too much to actually get a saltwater tank going. You can run it with a canister filter. I am right now. Um, you don't need a protein skimmer. I have a hang on the back protein skimmer right now, but it's not something that you absolutely need. So let's get into the hardware aspect of this reef tank right now. Okay, so first we're gonna look at a, uh, I got a hang on the back protein skimmer right there that's running, it helps oxygenate the water. But other than that, if you're from the freshwater world, that actually does a lot, that actually uh, foams up a lot of the, the bad stuff that would normally have to be siphoned out into a cup. Doesn't mean that you, you can't do water changes or you don't need to do water changes. Uh, you need a lot, you need a pretty high tech setup to not do any water changes. So protein skimmer just helps, uh, you know, get a lot of that out of there. Hang on the back refugium. I do have some, it's made by Phoenix right now. Turn on the light, you can see back here. I got some pulsing zinnia back there as, as well as some uh, dragon's breath and some chato. Um, I probably have to clean that out eventually one day. I upgraded the light recently. This is a Fluval, Fluval 3.0 Marine and Reef, the 48 inch model, so the four foot model. This thing is completely awesome. Um, you can actually do, you know, day, night cycle, all that stuff. It is, it is really awesome. Other than that, under under here, if you can see, I actually have a canister filter. That's right, you don't need a sump to actually run a saltwater tank. A um, lot, lot of misconceptions, you don't need a reactor, you don't need all this other stuff. It kind of depends on what you're going for. Um, you may need like a calcium reactor or to dose if you have a tank that's full, absolutely chock full of uh, you know, corals and all that other stuff. Let's turn off this light so we can get rid of the glare. I am using ocean, I, I got some live uh, sand that actually adds a lot of good bacteria to this tank. Um, this is, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but with the blue filter. Livestock wise, we do have, you can see one of them right there. We have three green spot of puffers that have been Moved over to full marine, and you guys know that. These guys are characters. They take turns, you know, kind of bullying each other, especially uh, Yakko and Wacko here, uh, which is funny. There are four green chromis. Three are out right now. One of them likes to hide under this rock. I don't know why. The two mollies are still here, uh, you know, being doing their thing. Uh, they, they're, they're okay. They. They kind of still spar with each other, but yeah, you can see they're chasing each other right now. Then we got Dot here, who is, uh, she's a cutie, of course. She's a cutie. And then right here is Dexter, the newest addition to the tank, his Valentini puffer. He is absolutely amazing. I love him. Um, great personality, been a model citizen. A lot of these puffers are, you know, reef safe with caution, meaning they might eat some corals and you can see here that he has just been a model citizen um, there is copepods in this tank um, and uh, i could see him in the refugium when i turn everything off you can see him in there so i know there's some on the rocks and things like that and you can see him picking at the rocks every now and again um, also you can notice the addition of corals there's a lot more corals in this tank than there used to be <laughs> meaning basically there was none so <laughs> this is a 
neon leather toadstool coral right here, which is doing absolutely phenomenal. That thing is growing super fast. Um, right now I have the, the wave makers off because of the, uh, be, because I was just feeding the corals, um, which that's the one thing you don't realize being from freshwater, you don't realize that these things are actually alive. These corals are alive, they move. That, that Yuma mushroom up there, well, let's go back. We got um, pulsing zinnia in the back there, you can see them kind of pulsing. If I zoom in, you can see the little pom-poms pulsing in the in the background they pulse more in the wave yeah but you can see them moving it's it's quite amazing I'll be honest with you uh, very hypnotizing coral very fast grower um, can be a nuisance if you don't keep it under control but as of right now it's only on that rock this right here is my only SBS in the tank um, I glued it to the side of there its polyps are all out it looks like it's doing okay not much growth right now, uh, but it's it's doing all right. This is a rainbow yuma right there, which it's hard to tell, but it has green and purple on it. That's my big yuma, which is eating right now, but it, it is actually, it's massive. It looks like a satellite dish on here. Um, right here is Leptoceros, so it's an encrusting coral. Um, I did not actually order this. This was mistakenly given to me on an order for, of mushrooms. Um, this is a neon rhodactis mushroom right here is some trumpet coral uh, some neon green trumpet coral or candy cane coral um, just recently got this which is the teal um, neon or teal candy candy cane coral or the blue um, up here you can see there's just different types of rhodactis this is a discosoma right here mushroom right here I think I believe and then these three right here our rhodactus. You got a Superman. Um, looks like a like Christmas colors. I don't even know what you would call that. And then this one is just like brownish. Um, all of them react. All of them move. Uh, like I said, it's hard to tell. Um, then you have uh, this is actually my Frammer coral. Um, it actually is. If you look at the tips, part of them are hammer. Part of them are actually frog spawn. And then underneath there is a little tiny baby frog spawn. I just got. Uh, yesterday uh, from Extreme Marine Aquarium on Facebook. Shout out to them. They He actually gave me an awesome deal on all the coral. This right here is a, a zoanthid called Everlasting Gobstopper. Really, really, really nice color. Um, let me turn on the blue light here so you guys can actually see everything. But you can see Yakko here is a is a chunk. I mean, he is a big boy now. He is a big boy. And they the UV sterilizer over there, I added to the tank after we had an outbreak of marine velvet or marine ick. It accidentally, if you watched my last video, it did take out the clownfish, one of the other clownfish. It took out the royal grama and a couple green chromas. So it, it really worked fast and um, I didn't know that, you know, marine ick and velvet last like a month long. So I had to dose for an entire month, plus add a UV sterilizer to this tank. And since then, I have not had any issues. Also, I am no, I didn't have any issues until I actually bought fish from a different pet store. And I, I got the Valentini Puffer for, kid you not, $18 from Stingray Bay. And uh, he's he had zero health issues. Gorgeous little dude. Um, amazing so I'm so happy that right now I'm able to mix not only mix different types of puffers but also have corals and they're not being eaten so that's a huge thing I'm gonna turn turn I'm going to turn everything back on so you can actually see the you know the waves and all that other stuff see how the current looks because it definitely looks a lot more alive once the current is going all right it's really hard to tell with the colors here um, just how everything looks, but uh, yeah, these guys are looking good. Everything's looking good. Um, the puffers do tend to still wall, wall ride. Every now and again, the Valentini puffer will do it as well. And like I said, there's plenty of room in here. There's plenty of hiding spots. There's there's stuff everywhere. What you looking at, boy? I, I am falling in love with this guy. This guy is, is yeah, he, he is amazing. I really love him. 
So, yep, Dexter right here is the man. Ain't that right, boy? Ain't that right, boy? He seriously, I swear he reacts to me. I swear he's reacting. If anything, he's eaten some of this uh, Dragon's Breath macroalgae. He's taking little bites from it. And uh, right now he's hump hunting for those copepods. He can see them, you know? He sees them and he goes after them, you know? So he, he is a gorgeous little dude. I, I love him. They can get about four inches long. Um, he's about mm, two right now, so he's about half size. He was way smaller when I got him too, so he's grown a lot since he's gotten in this tank. So the only thing I like I, I really worry about is him going after some of these LPS core, which like I said, he hasn't gone after them yet. Um, he just kind of goes around and looks at them. And he, you can see he's kind of just looking for copepods, looking for them. And actually, funny enough, I didn't buy any copepods. I actually just... Uh, they, they just showed up in my refrigium after over time. So this little octospun, this is going to be Euphilia Island right here. I, I'm going to actually try to get some, uh, I want to get a completely different color. Because right now I have green and purple tip coral. Uh, actually, let's turn on the blue light so I can actually show you that real quick. There. So now you can see everything looks so neon can really see what these colors look it's so hard to tell I need one of those filters but you can see the gobstoppers looking amazing in this in this light same thing with these um, even the teal the blue looks amazing as well but uh, you know I'm trying to go for uh, you know a completely different color color you feel you maybe a hammer coral over here um, the only one I, if you don't know this you can't really keep torches together so but you can't keep frog spawn octo spawn hammer corals all together so i'm planning on putting another hammer coral over here so that's enough of the blue light let's turn it back to normal um but yeah i have the light cycle that's actually shut, set up for the fluval uh uh light that kind of go it like makes it simulate sunrise and sunset so it really starts at around 10 a.m. It'll take an hour just to get to like 20% blues. And uh, over time, then, it, then for about three hours a day, it does the full light spectrum. So all, all RGB are full, and then it, it creeps back down to mainly blue. So I notice it is helping with my algae on the walls a lot, a lot. And so far, I am still not using RODI water. I actually did order an RO, an RO filter that I'm going to start using for not only drinking water but also for the salt water. So you're talking about a TDS of somewhere around eight or eight to ten, compared to zero, right? So um, considering I'm having this much success right now with corals, with not even doing anything. I know there is some more silica that can cause some brown algae and some other things in the water, which is what I want to get rid of. But I'm fine with a TDS of nine or 10 for, salt, for mixing salt water, considering I'm having so much success right now without doing it at all. So I do get why you would want to do completely zero TDS water, um, but you know, I, I'm fine with saving a little bit more money and just going with RO water and uh, going that route. So these guys are all doing good. Everything is good. It was, it's been a long time since I lost a fish in here. So, you know, I can't wait to see what happens with the corals and everything looks great. So guys, that is really gonna do it for the video. Um, yeah, what do you guys think of the 75 gallon saltwater tank? It is turning out to be something amazing. Um, you know, after this 55 gallon drum that's behind me, once I do all the water changes and that is done, I have an RO unit that's coming, so it'll be RO water and I will test the TDS there to see what it is. Like I said, if the TDS is like under 10, I'm not gonna care, I'm not that meticulous. I think the corals are doing great. I think there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to coral. Yes, there are coral that are very finicky. Um, SBS can actually just absorb all the calcium in like two seconds. That's why I'm really focusing on LPS and softies. And I actually like them better than SBS so far. Um, but it is good to have that one piece of SBS in there. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm loving this. I'm loving the coral, to be honest. I'm loving it. I, I, I see why people get into it and to see that they're actually alive and they're moving 
and everything, you know, it's, it's a lot different than you think. The first time I saw a coral close up, I was just like, what? <laughs> I literally thought coral didn't move. I didn't think it was really alive. And uh, nothing in the world is really like it. If, you, if, it, if we put it into perspective, that would be like taking, it, like fragging it in itself is fragmentation of another thing. So like for instance, that leather coral, that neon leather coral, once it actually gets big, you can cut a ring around it with like a razor blade and actually take pieces of it and rubber band them to a frag and it'll create a whole new one. That's like putting in perspective, taking so, like, to say you took a piece of my foot and put it somewhere else and then you go, well, another David's gonna grow in about six months. <laughs> nothing, nothing works like that. Nothing in nature, non-ocean or non-salt water, water really reacts that way. That's so crazy to me. I mean, plants are kind of like that. But, uh, you know, corals have mouths and stuff, so it's a, it's a whole new world that I'm, I'm realizing and I'm getting into, and uh, it's really, really cool. I'm not, uh, probably not going to be adding any more corals until my birthday, um, but this is really awesome. I'll keep doing updates on the 75 gallon, um, and uh, yeah, if you like the video, guys, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.